Serious, what's a secret you will take to the grave but don't mind telling on the internet? I used to work for the airport and so got very discounted fares for friends and family. My mom was going on a trip with her friend to Key West and they were gonna drive since flying was too expensive. I talked her into letting me handle the flying arrangements and they'd save a ton. A typical $500 plus flight turned into like $250 for both of them combined. Well. I was still kinda new at booking reservations and whatnot, And I ended up screwing up the reservation. I think I only booked it for one way or something. So the night before their flight. I rebooked it. And paid the $450 for the both of them. Money I really didn't have, and have since never told my mom. It was for Mother's Day. So I figured that was my gift to her. It's been nearly 10 years since. This is something I should have told my best friend but I don't have the heart to tell him this. An hour before his girlfriend died in a car accident I saw her at my job, TGIF, making out with the captain of the track team. His cousin. It's been 8 years but I can't do that to him he was gonna propose to her that day. Damn. My sympathies. Honestly. I would take that to the grave. No need to cause him any more pain and even hurt your friendship with him. Now. The cousin. I would have confronted that R. Uh, 1. To make sure he keeps his mouth shut and 2. So he's aware that you know about the unforgivable thing he did. He doesn't deserve to have a clear conscience. Having said that. The well-being of your friend is the most important thing. Good luck. My cousin F had a stripper during his bachelor party. Hours earlier. We randomly ran into his fiance and her friends and she made a huge deal about him hitting a strip club, specifically because of this. He comes out of the champagne room and told me I think I just f kid her. Only three people know this. Me. Him. The stripper. Edit. This really blew up. So I'm never going to tell her and I'm never going to bring it up to him ever. He's actually a good guy that unintentionally did a bad thing. He thought he was going to get a lap dance but she veered him left to the champagne room. Granted. He could have walked out at any moment but alcohol was also at play. He felt guilty afterwards and we were 16 hours away from the wedding ceremony. I wasn't going to make him feel guilty about it and ruin the wedding for them both. I think there's definitely a difference between having an affair and having a stripper ride your CCK for 30 seconds. Me and my cousin took turns licking each other's assholes when we were about 10 years old. I have vivid memory of it. We have never spoken of it since. We're both 25 year men now. And here I am too ashamed to admit to my partner that I want to lick his ass. Just curious. Does he have like some pink hairless asshole? I bent over in the mirror to look at mine between my legs once. Just sort of looked like a tiny starfish with werewolf syndrome. Didn't look appetizing. I'm a guy. When I was around 9-10 I had a friend, also guy, who pushed me up against the wall and started jacking me off. He started doing this frequently and made me masturbate in front of him with one of my parents personal massages. I tried to tell on him one time but went back on it really quickly. I think my mom knew what was going on though. Felt a bit like Stockholm because he was one of my only friends back then and I was really scared and confused. Then another friend started dry humping me at a sleepover one time. Being sexualized so early on in life really f kid me up. As a teenager. I had cancer multiple times and nearly died a lot. At one point. I spent several weeks in intensive care and survived despite no doctor thinking that I possibly could live. More than 20 years later. Everyone I know still comments on how I survived purely on will to live. I actually spent every moment in that hospital bed in absolute agony. Desperately wanting to die. Edit. Thank you to the kind folks for my first reddit awards and for all of the kind words. I'm healthy now and doing well. My first car accident back in high school was not because I swerved to miss a deal like I told my dad and the police. I actually tried to pull the emergency brake and do a 180 while going 50 miles per hour downhill. Had I gone off the other side of the road I would have gone down a 50 foot hill and into the river. That was the last time I ever tried anything like that. There just so happened to be deer tracks in the mud near the ditch where I ended up. 
I avoided a ticket and my dad paid to fix my car. I have never told him the truth in the 15 plus years since. I sharted on a New Year's party bus a few years ago. I thought it was just a fart but it was a small shotgun blast of fluid. I stayed calm. And threw away my undies at the next bar. Luckily there was little or no shti on the inside of my jeans and I was able to continue the night with no one aware of my poop crime. That happened to me on Halloween a few years ago. I drank 6 angry orchards and shut it in my thong. I just calmly walked into the bathroom and tore the side seams of the underwear so I could take them off and throw them away without having to remove my fishnets. No one was the wiser. So my grandfather had a hand in making one of the World Series trophies back in the day. He never got any credit. But we have photos and parts from his prototype. When I was a teen I added what I knew to Wikipedia since why not, although I believe it's gone now. But funny story I ended but being counted in newspapers all over the country. Proceed to a few years later I get a call from my mom who's almost in tears, of joy. She found that wiki page and was freaking out. She was so happy he finally got credit. She ended up making really fancy shadow boxes of the wiki page printed out. Copies of the photos and other baseball stuff. She made one for each of her siblings. I've had to just bite my tongue every time I go over there and see this thing hanging prominently in the living room. That my dad paid my mom $1500 for full custody of my youngest sibling. Not only would this be a massive blow to my sibling but my dad remarried quite quickly and the new wife is the very definition of an evil stepmom. If my sibling knew that our mom gave her up for such a small sum of money and the trade off was 5 plus years of abuse she would be destroyed. I recently got into my first relationship. It's been great. And we're spending as much time together as we can. But right now she's most of my social life. So every time I'm being social with people I'm going in for a hug and a kiss. The few times I'm not with her and hanging out with friends. I have to stop myself from going in for a kiss because that's just what feels natural. Even if it's with guy friends. When I was 20 I was dating a man and he was my first love. My first boyfriend. My first kiss. The man who took my virginity. Etc. And 3 months into the relationship I found out he was married to someone I worked with. But even knowing that information. I still loved him and felt like I could do no better. I was overweight and very insecure. And I ended up sleeping with him a few more times after I found out he was married. One day. It's like a switch came on in my head. And I regretted it and felt ashamed and stopped seeing him altogether. I prayed to God for forgiveness every day and even though it happened over 5 years ago I still feel really bad. He died 3 years ago. I hate sports. I've been playing softball and volleyball since I was 6 and have always been a natural at it. I made varsity for both teams my freshman year and was voted MVP for both teams. I feel like I can't quit because it almost seems like without sports I am nothing. My parents would be so disappointed in me if I quit but I don't think I can keep playing for much longer. I don't have the desire to play in college and now I don't even wanna play high school anymore. I'm so burnt out from the constant season that it made me hate it. I was molested as a kid. No one. Not even my wife knows. It's not a source of trauma or anything. I don't think my mind works quite that way. I feel basically nothing about it. It was another event in my life. I was around 9. The other kid was somewhere in his upper teens. I don't remember his age. I choose to keep it secret because I think someone will think I'm demented for having actually enjoyed it while it was happening. I didn't hate it. I don't hate him. I still think it's disgusting to do that to kids. And I have no illusions that the man who molested my mother when she was a kid is and was a monster. But I just don't care that it happened to me personally. I know I'm the 1% of the 1%. And that's why I keep it quiet. I don't feel like it was traumatic to me or change me. I really don't know how to communicate this without sounding some level of insane or contradictory. I'll leave it at that. I guess. Ask questions if you want. I'll try to clarify. When I was 15 or 16, my mother and I found a dead body. It was the father of an old school friend. 
other than obviously telling my father and sister whom I was still living with at the time. I have never spoken about it. It still haunts me to this day and barely a day has passed in the last 29 years where I haven't thought about it. I once got blackmailed on Discord. It was only a few months ago but I haven't told anyone. Basically a guy said that if I don't send him my nudes, he will do some things. Of course I knew he was beasting and I blocked him. But it's just at the back of my head always. I haven't slept very well since and I just keep having nightmares about it. I may be in math class and I just daydream the acts he might or might not have done. Never told a soul about this. And I never will again. I am madly and deeply in love with my half-sister. And have been for more than 10 years. And it's the main reason that I've never had a long-term relationship in my life. I'm in my later 30s. It's not been easy hiding it. Since we are close. And it's been even harder to force myself to keep my distance when I know she's been going through difficult times. At the risk of exposing my true feelings for her. I really don't want to feel this way. But I haven't had the guts to talk to a therapist about this. Although I do realize I need to at some point. But it sure feels good to get it off my chest for once. I had a boyfriend pass away in his sleep 7 years ago and before bed we had a huge fight about nothing. I woke in the middle of the night annoyed at his snoring and I tried to wake him but couldn't so I just got up and went to sleep in the guest room. Deep down it seemed odd I couldn't wake him but I shrugged it off and had a thought of. What if he passed away in his sleep? I know my thought didn't kill him but I have always felt like I should have known something was wrong and I should have tried harder to wake him. He was never that deep of a sleeper for him to keep on snoring like that. Colon. Stroke. Everyone around me at work. All of my co-workers. Bosses. And other people are almost exclusively of one political party. It's the case of. We're not supposed to talk about that at work. But we half broach the question to new people to test out their allegiance because we're all on the same page. Kinda thing. I just go along with it to be honest. They're genuinely good people. But I'm afraid they'd treat me or look at me differently if they knew the truth. This post is old enough for this to not be seen now. I have a huge crush on a guy I work with. He has a girlfriend and I would never be that woman but I have never been more turned on by someone just making eye contact with me. I find it hard to control my sexual thoughts around him and it scares me because I've never been this way before over someone outside of a relationship. Not as dramatic as other secrets but I haven't told a soul so I feel better getting it out there. I posted this in another thread but happy to share it here too. I feel it applies. I had an on and off again online relationship for 8 years. No one knew about Ben and I don't know why it went on for so long. We would find comfort in each other and share pretty much everything. Our relationship took us weird places emotionally speaking and sexually. We both knew it was an unhealthy relationship but I always felt like I had no other connection compared to him. Until I met my current boyfriend. I had to break it to Ben and tell him we could no longer continue the sexual side of whatever the hell we had. He completed understood and held no resentment towards me. He did say he needed some time and I've heard from him about 3 or 4 times since I started dating my current boyfriend. The last time he contacted me I didn't respond as I want to leave what we had in the past. Hope you're doing okay. Ben. My oldest brother molested me when I was very young. We were sitting on the couch and he made me jack him off while he touched me. It was terrible. Later on we shared a room and I would wake up to find him jacking off across the room from me. Even when he knew I was awake. Every time I would try to bring these up to my mom she would deny it or play it off since he has mental issues. Double quote. Also my ex was a sex addict that didn't love me for anything besides sex. She manipulated and guilted me into sex many times even when I said no. Every time I would talk to her about using a condom she would talk me out of it. She also convinced me to finish in her one time. Stupidly I did. But luckily to no consequences. If we weren't hanging out she was mad at me for not spending time with her. And when we were hanging out she would accuse me of not loving her enough until I fked her. I could never just lay with her and relax. 
I was just so stupid to even stay with her for so long. It was a really messy breakup with ongoing drama because she followed me to my college. I don't really tell many people these things because I feel like they won't believe me. I feel so weak for having these experiences. My view of everything is fk pretty much. But I'm working on it. Thank you for listening reddit. I nearly killed someone once. It was a complete accident. I got harassed at a train station late at night. As a 15 year old girl. These two girls. Much bigger and older than me. Randomly cornered me and started insulting me and my family. After about 15 minutes of hearing their shit talk. I saw my train arrive in the distance and I moved away from the girls towards the edge of the platform. So I could get on the train quicker. They tried to block me. And made an insult I don't even remember. It had something to do with me needing to apologize for being something. I punched her in the face as hard as I could. With pure rage. But my punch still wasn't exactly hard as I had no strength or training. The girl I punched stumbled backwards. And just kept stumbling and stumbling. For over 6 meters. And nearly fell off the edge of the platform. The train arrived just as she nearly fell. And if she had fallen all the way she would have ended up between the train and the platform. Or under the train. All because of one measly punch. There were no witnesses. No cameras. And I bolted out of there. To this day I've only told people I was harassed that night and ran away. Never that I was almost responsible for killing someone. I doubt anyone would even believe me if I told them. I started taking a lot of Adderall in 9th grade. I had 3 people who would regularly give me their pill because they didn't want it. I was dumb and didn't really know what it was but wanted drugs. Ends up. I loved it. My grades suddenly went up. I was happier and better to be around. My relationship with my parents started to get better since I was acting like a normal kid. My parents were the type to never put their kids on any type of behavioral drug though. And my relationship with them wasn't too hot so I couldn't like. Bring it up. All three of the peeps giving it to me stopped within a few days of each other. I had massive withdrawal. Which, at the time, didn't occur to me. I just thought I was super depressed for no reason. I was incredibly aggressive. Graves nosedived and my relationship with parents went really bad again as they punished me for my bad attitude. I put it all together just a few years ago. Kinda interesting. My great grandparents, specifically my dad's mother's parents, were first cousins. It doesn't bother me until I actually start to think about it because I never knew my great grandparents as they died long before I was born. But my dad told me about it and is still completely weirded out by it. I think it also upsets him. Because he had an aunt and an uncle by them born deaf. His mother was also somewhat sick for a good chunk of his life. And only one of his aunts turned out healthy. But she spent her life taking care of her siblings and never even married. In 2014 I was on an overnight train from Madrid to Lisbon. I paid extra to have a private cabin so I could sleep all night in peace. Before I went to sleep I went to the bar just one carriage down to grab a bite and a beer. When I was walking back to my private cabin the bartender offered to walk me back and open my door. He took the key from my hand and opened the door. When I went into the cabin he followed me and sexually assaulted me. Just before he left he told me to be quiet. I've never told anyone. When I was 12. My house got robbed. A few minutes before. I saw the robbers outside while I was in the kitchen. They were both wearing all black and walking near the garage. They didn't notice me. I got scared and convinced myself it was just the shadows of the neighbors outside or something. Till this day. My whole family still wonders how they got in. Who they were. How did no one see them? Etc. The police were called after. And our neighbors were at our house checking if we were okay. Thankfully they didn't steal anything. I still feel guilty as fuck. I nearly murdered a person with a bow and arrow. I was in the forest with my friends and I stole my dad's bow and arrow and I wanted to learn how to use it. My friends were telling me to fire the arrow in the sky. I did so. And when I let the arrow go. Five seconds later I heard a mad screaming. 
I put the bow down and ran with my friends to go see what was the screaming. The next thing I see is a man with an arrow in his foot. It kinda looked like the scene from grown ups when they were playing the bow and arrow game. Anyway the man told me to call an ambulance which I did. And later cops and an ambulance came. I ran back to the bow and I buried it with leaves and dirt. Anyway I me and my friends got away with it and my dad never knew his bow and arrow was gone. We all swore to never talk about it again. My great uncle Val used to have factory on the lower east side of New York where the mob families used to meet back when they were really cracking down on organized crime. He did this because my grandfather had a serious gambling problem and his daughter wanted to go to college. He'd make them all dinner and would let them wash their money through his garment business. Say what you want but my grandfather never got in trouble for gambling. His daughter went to dental school. We never had to pay for the retirement home. And every Christmas his family gets flowers and a bottle of wine from his hometown in Sicily. When I was little. Probably no older than 5. I had this friend. She invited me to a play date and we played a gist game. She look at touch my genitals. Even spread my cheeks to look at my arsehole and demand I do the same to her. It started with her asking me if anyone's seen it before. Besides my parents obviously. When I didn't know what she meant she clarified it as CNT, or street least my language is word for it. I told her no. Why would anyone see that part of me and she told me it was normal. She even said her parents weren't allowed to find out and that she did that with all her friends. At the time I didn't realize. But now that I think about it. SHR may have been sexually abused. I genuinely hope she got help if that was the case. When I was little. My parents would take my brother and me Christmas shopping for an angel every year. I'm sure that the year I was in first grade. The angel we bought for was one of my classmates. After Christmas break. When everyone was sharing stories about presents. She described literally everything we had bought. I kept my mouth shut. But I knew. Thank you for keeping quiet. When I was in grade school. My mom had to rely on the Salvation Army for a meal box and gifts for me and my brother one Christmas. Our box was delivered by the mother of one of my classmates. She recognized me and told her daughter. Who told my whole class. My teacher shut that shti down really quickly when some of the cool kids started making fun of me. But I was absolutely mortified. Don't care enough to make a throw away for this because it was so long ago but. When I was 14 my mom left me alone overnight to go to Colorado with her fiancé. Yes that isn't okay. I know. Comma me being a dumbass posted I was home alone on MySpace and a boy who rode my bus messaged me asking if he could come over. I said yes. We had sex. Consensual. He took my virginity. He was probably 16 or 17? I can't remember. Not even an hour later his older brother messaged me asking to come over. I said yes. I honestly don't know why. We had SX, also consensual, and when he went to penetrate I said your brother just popped my cherry. And he said well let me finish it for him. Ugh gross I know. IDK what the FCKI was thinking. He was definitely 18. Too old to be having SX with a 14 year old. And yes he knew my age. I kept hooking up with the older brother until he graduated and went to college. Only one person knows this and she probably doesn't even remember me telling her. My mom's cheating on my dad for about 2 years now. I don't think I'll ever tell my dad because my siblings are still very young and I don't want to ruin their lives. My life's pretty shitty since knowing. I'm also ashamed that I still can't properly confront her. I'm very nice and don't think I have the courage to do so. Plus she's a very fierce woman. I guess sometimes people are shitty and don't consider the effects of their actions on other people. The disappointment and disbelief I still feel and carry with me to this day is just too much. A guy who worked with my fiancé wouldn't stop sending her lewd texts. Or trying to give her weird gropey inappropriate hugs at work. One day he tried to drag her into a broom closet but she fought him off. The booziness treated the sexual harassment claims like they were just playful rough housing that was overreacted to. So. I put on a ski mask. Crouched behind his truck. 
and when he came out I pepper sprayed him in the face. Then beat the shti out of him with a tire iron. Then I took his phone and wallet to make it look like a mugging. I actually made a new reddit account because I will not tell another living soul other than me about this. When I was 7 or 8. I lived in a community where everyone knew each other and you can pretty much sleep without locking your doors. One night we had bunch of guests over and everyone was having fun conversing so I asked my mom for some money to buy a candy. There was a convenience store right outside our building literally two steps to the left from when you walk out the apartment. I go inside the store. Buy my candy. And head out. As I was walking towards our apartment. A guy grabs my hand and tells me to not scream. I was so scared that I couldn't scream even if I wanted to. I was 7 or 8. He takes me to few floors above to a secluded stairway where there are no cameras or people. He pulls down my pants and starts touching my penis. I was confused and scared to understand what his intentions were. He also had something against my neck and kept saying shh. That object could have been a knife but I have no memory of it. About 5 minutes of him touching me. He goes down one flight of stairs to see if anyone is there. To my luck he sees an old woman and runs. I dk what it was about that lady but till this day. I'm convinced that lady was an angel. Had she not been there the guy would have murdered me. Till this day. No one knows not even my parents and I'll keep it that way till death.